In this lecture, we are going to elaborate on the quality of data. Now the term quality and the process of improving the quality of data is going to appear over and again in this course. So let's just understand what we mean by good quality data. So there are few characteristics by which we can judge the quality of data and using them as a standard we can also improve on the quality of data. So the first thing to look into is the validity of data. In order for a data to be valid, it needs to fulfill the data type constraint that is if the data is going to represent the number of items so the data type should be in integers. There may be values that may not comply with that and that is going to affect the validity of the data. The range constraint also affects the validity of data where let's say a possible range of edge for a particular activity is from 18 to 60 and if a value is outside of this range then that is going to violate the range constraint and would affect the validity of data. Mandatory constraint reflects on the cells of the data that should have been provided but are rather empty. It can be applied for features that are very important in relation to the task that is being performed and therefore we cannot use the imputation techniques to assume what a value could be and replace it. Unique constraint may also occur in some cases where it is important for a feature to have a unique value for each record. So if that condition is not fulfilled, that is going to violate the unique constraint and in turn is going to affect the validity of data. The set membership constraint refers to the fact that the values of a feature are supposed to be from a given range of values. But when the value does not come up from that range, then that is violating the set membership constraint. For example, if the value of a feature can be either A, B or C and the value that is being found in the dataset is neither of these values that are the legitimate values for a particular feature, then that value is out of the membership set and is therefore going to affect the validity of the data. Then the data can also have issues with its accuracy. Accuracy refers to the degree of the data being true for a record. Now, for example, if the age of a person is 650, so that is clearly not possible and therefore it's quite evident that the data is not accurate. However, if the age of a person was supposed to be 30, but by mistake his age is being entered at 31, this is going to be accepted as an accurate value because we do not have access to the actual sources from which this data was collected. But since its value looks to be a true value, so therefore it is going to be accepted as an accurate value. Completeness refers to the fact that how many missing values are there in a dataset. The more there are, the less complete a dataset is going to be. And therefore, more effort is going to be required to complete that dataset or to come up with the alternate approaches that is going to deal with this problem. At number four, we have the consistency problem in the data, which means that to what degree in accordance with the other values. The consistency aspect of the data is looked into from the perspective of the domain of the data. For example, if all the cars in the data set have four wheels, then a car with three or five wheels is going to be inconsistent with the rest of the data. And finally, uniformity refers to the fact that for a particular feature, we have values that are presented in different units. And this problem may arise if we have combined the data coming from different sources. And if we are getting data from multiple sources, then duplication can also be one of the problems. So in this lecture, we have tried to summarize what we mean by the good quality data so that in the coming up lectures, when we would try to improve on the quality of data, 
we would already know the characteristics of good quality data and we can cross-check which aspects are being improved by performing certain actions on the data.